Hello, uh, channel right here, and I'm on the um, super carrier here. This is a JF-17 mission, but I've got a uh, I've got a, a little help from my um, E2, I think it is, uh, AWACS, naval AWACS from the uh, George Washington here. But uh, the reason I'm doing this is just to show off how good the super carrier looks. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I've got an, I've got an FA-18 which I have practiced um, launching from the um, carrier, uh, and I seem to be able to do that absolutely fine following the uh, ground crew's um, instruction and guidance. Look at that, easy. Uh, just haven't managed to land successfully yet. That's going to take a bit of practice, I guess. Uh, and especially because I'll be using a lot of uh, K3 recoveries because uh, I tend to fly a lot at night. But uh, as you can see, there's a great crew just preparing for the. Uh, trying to get this AWACS launched. You don't need to. Oh, I don't think you'd need to own a Super Carrier for you to use it as an AI asset in game. I believe that is. Uh, there for you to use, which is uh, which is fantastic. If you don't uh, want to, uh, you know, you're not going to do carrier operations. As you can see the AWAX is um, the A2 a AWAX is, is, is on the uh, on the steamer there, ready for lift for launch. lights on. It's amazing. It just looks so good. This wow, there it goes. Off into the night. This uh, mission is a is a is a um, another terrorist hunt. So there's a group of terrorists. Amazing that. Um, let me just look at it. I love the lighting on it as well. Fantastic here in the Gulf. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, about the mission. These are the terrorists. They've been going around in these uh, vehicles, terrorising uh, the populace. And um, we're off to eliminate their leader. And uh, we're just calling him Codename Tango at the moment. And he's in the front vehicle, I believe. There's a four vehicle. Uh, column here going around the urban areas terrorizing people extorting money all that usual threatening bullying stuff back to my uh, e3 e2 sorry going up the uh, coast here towards the uh, peninsula of Oman uh, Talking about the JF-17, uh, lots of... I forgot to print them all out, uh, but you can see it on the, the most recent change log. I mean, the biggest thing for me, which was stopping me playing it for a while, is... Uh, the radar wasn't working, now it's fully working again. I'm able to lock, uh, lock up things from, uh, you know, 40 miles or so out. So that's fantastic. Let's back together. There's uh, a lot of features that, that I haven't delved into. The cockpit has a new sound. Uh, so the switches are clicking and popping, which is great. Um, doesn't seem to be any um, collision light anymore. Um, I don't know what happened with that, but uh, that seems to have disappeared a bit. You still get it. Uh, the tail's still flashing, but uh, the underneath cl collision light doesn't seem to be there. Everything else is, just looks fantastic on the JF-17. It's uh, probably the most complete, probably is the most complete DCS model. Yeah, so the radar's back. And that's uh, great news when you're trying to uh, hunt and track uh, moving um, 
assets such as enemy trucks and things like that. So there's the AWACS. I don't think the AWACS detects ground objects. I really don't know. I think in real life it will do, but uh, on DCS I don't think it it does that. But um, I'll send it up there anyway. Uh, I'll put my data link on in my uh, cockpit when I get that. My flight is a little bit delayed. I'll give this uh, AWACS time to uh, climb to its uh, 30,000 feet. Yes, the carrier just looks fantastic. I love the pink light at the top of the mast on the island there. And you can even see the captain and people on the station. And then the little windows. Just amazing, really. Just um, the way they, the, the just the way the. Uh, the staff work, like clockwork, uh, getting launching you off very immersive. Every detail just seems to be very well done. As I said, I haven't landed on my uh, on it yet in my F-18. Still flying uh, the JF-17 quite a lot. I think I'll get more into the F-18 once they introduce the up-and-coming ground radar. So kudos to Edith Eagle Dynamics for the uh, supercarrier. Yeah, my nasty terrorists here. So the objective of this mission was to destroy uh, Tango, who's in the first first um, vehicle, and uh, Tango r runs this crew mafia style. I won't know what hit them because I will be at least 15 or 20,000 feet in the air hopefully when I strike them. Today I'm going to be using the IRC-701 Maverick style missile. Um, I can use this from a very high height but um, it only has a uh, distance, a, a range of, I think I've worked it out, you can get a lock at about between 10 and 12 miles out, uh, which is still quite a way, a way out uh, for such a missile. So, uh, yes, we'll see if it's successful. Uh, there's no air threat. This is in a small, uh, small group of towns. Uh, this is just a. Uh, operation to get rid of these nasty horrible people victimizing the populace and they're tooled up they got a uh, they have got anti aircraft uh, guns on the uh, <laughs> on this convoy So here's me, flight was delayed, I'm in my um, JF-17, it's a bit of a frame rate problem here. I haven't got the best machine to run this to be honest with you, but it works fine for what I want to do, so uh, there you go, it, uh, everything's fine. Just takes a minute for it to uh, sort itself out, so there I am just dimming a few uh, lights here. 
in the cockpit just getting it to uh, the way I like it that's the main thing to do make sure everything's comfortable pop, pop the data up doing this first now the data uh, cartridge just because I keep forgetting to do it there's the missiles there there's one on that wing IRC 701s another one there on the wingtips I've got the PL IR missile which I don't anticipate having to use because insurance warning warning sort out the config error there put the flaps down for takeoff lights are on external lights that is and now I'm just setting out the course zero one will be the main first waypoint switch it to auto change initially so it auto changes the waypoint that is not set, that's another change. That's not set to default anymore. The default is now a manual change. And just sorting out the um, the data link here. And the IFF interrogation. Move that lamp. Getting pinged on the RWR, as you see, it's picked up uh, the AWACS, which is above me. In field one one, request taxi to runway. Yes, yeah, so uh, if you heard them clicks in the cockpit, it's uh, very good. You know, you've just confirmation that you've definitely clicked something or uh, changed something on the on the uh, cockpit. So expediting here for the uh, airstrip. Mission time is uh, local time is um, just after nine o'clock in the evening here in Kashab. Kashab is the uh, main, uh, I believe it's the main airport of uh, Oman. So I think I'll be moving all these operations to Siri Island. The uh, air base there. So this will be my last operation out of Cope Saab and leave it as a civilian air airfield airport. Just checking, there's no incoming on the airstrip. So it's not too long a taxi this, uh, just remembering that you have to taxi some way along the, um, the uh, strip itself, the runway, sorry. Hope you're all keeping safe out there from this uh, horrible virus. Stay at home and uh, stay at home and watch. Um, sorry, stay at home and play DCS. Let's 
confirmation of time there, I think I said 21.53 Coming up at 10 to 10 o'clock at night So here I am, just peeling off to the side here, there's a little bit of a, a dink in the runway here, so you can uh, comfortably turn around onto the back onto the runway. Remember my flaps are down. Gonna use military power to take off, no need for uh, combat select combat isn't selected, just got two light missiles on me. Four with the IR uh, the air missiles. No messing about here, just kicking the uh, engines and take off. Rotate because I'm quite light. Altitude. And gear up. Altitude. Altitude. Landing gear. Got that uh, warning for landing gear, but it has retracted. Sorry, not retracted, whatever the uh, <laughs> other set of retract is. And then I'll just put a call in to my uh, AWACS. Just declare. Just to let them know I'm uh, airborne, really. As I say, he doesn't, I don't think he Overlord spots ground. One, one, doesn't really spot Request ground uh, targets. So you may be as much use a chocolate teapot at this point. But it's good to have uh, company in the sky with you when you're a single player. No wingman with me today on this mission, as it's quite straightforward and there's no air to surface threats as such, and there's no air to air threat. Basically, a terrorist hunt. See if we can. Uh, Find time go and destroy you. Okay, he's currently twenty five thousand angels. And as you go, just checking the dials all the time. Turn the lights out at this point to go black for operations. So I'm black. And increasing altitude. I can stay between 15 and 20,000 feet for this mission. Just um, setting out the weapons suite here. Turning it on. Takes about three minutes to align. So uh, just setting all that up. And then I'm going to just set the 
air to ground radar up. There we go. Change it from default map to GMTI, ground moving targets. Nothing on data link yet, nothing on AG. Just check the name of the AWACS again. One, one, in field. One, one, request picture. Enfield, one, one, overlord, one, one, clean. And just changing the waypoint back to manual so it doesn't change. New board up, pressing K. Just checking the waypoint. As you can see, I've got no out waypoint or no waypoints back to home plate. Um, just rely on the uh, FAF system for that, so you don't need to put um, lots of waypoints everywhere to get you home unless you want to take a certain route back to your uh, home airfield. So uh, once I've uh, done this mission, I'll head back out to waypoint two and then. Uh, uh, go to approach and that'll select a faff. Keep checking the outer ground radar, nothing located yet. I think uh, FAF stands for Forward Air. Oh, I don't know what it is now, maybe somebody can light me. So just testing my missile seeker here and slaving it. Uh, initially it will slave to uh, the waypoint you've got selected. But if you pick another speed as I'm going to do with the ground air, uh, air to ground radar it will automatically uh, latch onto whatever you've uh, selected on your ground radar. I think the visuals look better on the panels, I think that's an improvement. So I'm not picking anything up here. But my fuel's okay so I can uh, hang around for a little longer. The intelligence we've got on these terrorists is quite strong, so uh, they are out there somewhere in that urban sprawl. And if they're moving about, which I presume that they are from time to time, then we should be able to uh, locate them on the radar. 
Still not sure if you can locate uh, enemies on the map. Um, you know, but, uh, vehicles that aren't moving. Not quite sure about that. But obviously, that needs to be something implemented. I think. Be useful. Yes, Tango is down there somewhere. Obviously, it goes without saying, just make sure you keep an eye on everything as you're uh, turning and things like that. I, t I tend to use my autopilot when I turn, uh, just to keep um, altitude and things like that. I think the trimming seems better on here as well. Uh, I think when I used to trim off, if I dropped something heavy like a weapon, um, you know, just a game of seesaw to get the uh, plane back on an even kil kilter, that seems to have improved as well. I think it has, i not tested fully, but it seems like it may have. The air assets there. That was a helicopter above the uh, search and rescue helicopter above the uh, the uh, AWACS's home uh, mothership. So I'm making a big arc of this, but it's purely just so I can get some space between me and the uh, the waypoints so I can start a clean search. Just fine tuning and calibrate the uh, autopilot. So, nothing to write home about, nothing to report. I think this was my third attempt to find these uh, <laughs> terrorists. I wasn't successful, so I just flew back to uh, home plate. And that's what happens when you're a a pilot, you uh, a lot of the time it's just surveillance work and uh, not detecting anything. And if you do detect something, uh, doesn't necessarily mean you got the order to uh, engage. So we just have to mess about with the uh, just setting an altitude here, 15,000, just so do a slight dip. Just have to mess about with the uh, underground radar, see if we pick anything up, see if data link picks anything up. Switch my TV pod back on. Not really a pod, it's uh, the heads, the seeker head of the missile. That's what I can see. It's point no, no, wait point four, I think. Now at the top of the screen there you can see on the right hand panel I've got there it is, I've got vehicles. And 
the direction they're moving. Just wait to see if they turn up on my air to ground radar. They should do. Yes, and I can see them there. Let's try and acquisition them on that. Just taking a little bit of time. So far out. Finally, uh, yeah. still that lock. Locked a piece of ground. Right, there you go. Got a lock now. So my way out way out from them and you can see that dotted line is uh, my acquisition of those targets I think it's probably uh, the way the missile would fire towards them as well the aspects of the uh, missile So I'm just checking here to see if I can uh, lock the first uh, vehicle up, which I believe is Tango. If it strays out off uh, there, it just means I'm too far out to get a lock on on it. So uh, just press backspace and you'll uh, it'll, um, go back to the uh, locked point. got a bit closer and I noticed that it had actually locked the first the head of the column which I believe is Tango so I attempt to um, lock him up here by just pressing enter make sure your missile screen is center of interest There you go, I've got him locked. And, uh, I did notice that he is actually the... Uh, he is actually the head vehicle. That's Tango, definitely. So it's uh, a bit of surveillance always pays off, and I'm ready to fire at this terrorist, the head of this gang. Fired one off, going for another Warning. vehicle here. Warning. So that's all missiles fired off. Sort the config error out there, and let's go and have a look at these missiles. There they are. Oh, one's already hit. There's the other one hit as well. Tango is down. Repeat, Tango is down. So there you go, got a message that Tango is down. That's something I put into the trigger myself. Yeah, and he's dead. The other vehicles have scattered off road. It doesn't look like uh, it was a clean strike. It was in a built up civilian area, but it doesn't look like any uh, so precise those missiles. It not like it's caused any uh, any damage to the uh, surrounding buildings or any civilians, so that's good. That was bang on the road there, so uh, very good. So two kills with the 
rather stingy two missiles you can carry uh, for the C701 variety, TV or IR. Tend to use the TV ones if I'm doing anything through the day, and the IR ones at night. So, uh, as I said, I'm going to I'm just turn off all the uh, systems here. Combat systems are going off. Going back in the nav and uh, going to, uh, as I said, go out to waypoint two initially. This is my escape route. Uh, go back to nav. And then finally turn towards waypoint two to get out of dodge. And there we go. Turn on the waypoint to you now. Up us straight ahead. Switching the autopilot on. I think we're about 26 miles out at this point. Just putting the map on as well. The map's useful if you're. Uh, this shows you if you're above land or sea, the lay of the land, basically, as the map obviously does. And it's useful to have it in the cockpit. Problem with a lot of maps, especially in the FA-18, it just seems to be uh, very hard, difficult to read any of the information. Whereas on the F-17, JF-17, it is uh, very easily, uh, you can turn down the set. It's very easy to read. Just changing the settings like that on the uh, on the panel there. So we're heading towards the uh, Kashab Airport here. As I said, I'm going to move operations in future to Surrey Island. But, uh, for now, we're going back to the airport in Oman after a successful mission. in reality in a pilot you wouldn't know that until you did some sort of battle assessment so I suppose in reality I would have done another turn around the city this time using my W and D pod to uh, my T pod to uh, assess the damage
So, uh, using uh, my faff here. Here I go. So approach, get that, and there we go. And I know that uh, approach 50 is um, this uh, Kashab. So, uh, let's see, point pilot off, so turn on to the uh, faff line. And itself will turn me onto the airport runway. Now, the main one of the big differences now in the JF 17 is um, its speed. It's a nifty little thing. It always was, but now you'll really notice that when you're coming in for a landing, killing the speed will kill you. It's uh, you have to think about this so. Um, I've already started making the descent since I started making the descent. Let's just call it Kashan. Lights back on, lights on here, external lights. Right, so I'm lit up again, and uh, yeah, as I was saying, uh, killing the speed is a real killer, so uh, you need to think about this well as you're coming in. So I'm already descending, picking up speed, I'm basically laying off the throttle together. And uh, remember, you're gonna have to use those air brakes now never used to use them used to put the um because the that's another thing when you put the other flaps they'll only kick in if you're under 250 so um 250 kilometers an hour so remember um you need to get your speed down stick the flaps down there And you see the light hasn't ignited because uh, I'm three, about 368 at this point. So I'm going to have to bleed that speed. Even though I'm still on a way out, I'm thinking about speed all the time. I'm getting low, so I'm just raising a bit, and of course, when you raise, it will knock the speed uh, down as well. But it's still, it's it's a it's a marked difference. It's a marked difference when you're uh, coming in for landing now. I do like it actually. I do like it. It seems a bit more like you have a bit more control in some ways. Probably hear the engine gear. The engine's basically going off. And even though I've uh, been doing all I can to kill the speed, I'm still 260 at this point. And rising again as I come further down. So yeah, the speed brake comes into play. I just have a toggle speed brake, I don't have it on permanently. It's on the HOTAS, I just have a key which I can press down. I just use it as a normal brake as you would if you were on the ground really. Just breaking that air all the time. Uh, the Kashab uh, airport to the left there. And you see two one one one. Request navigation assistance. Didn't mean to do that. I 
everything's fine. I'm now at 250. As soon as I get to 250, my uh, flaps will uh, light up on the console. Maybe just glance that there, you can see. And now turning into the airport. And the runway's lit up there, out in front of me. Did a bit of a wide turn here, so uh, I'm off the glide slope a bit, but uh, it's easily corrected on the JF-17. And even though we've got no real thrust on or anything like that, no thrust on, you can still see I'm still at uh, 245. And I think it's at this point I uh, deploy my uh, landing gear. No, it's not landing gas down yet. Landing gas down now. In field, one, one, one. So landing up at the run runway here. This is a bit wibbly wobbly. Put it a little bit of a uh, speed back in, but always uh, using my speed brake. This is going to be a good landing. Houses of the port of Kashab. Altitude, altitude, altitude. Always a scary moment when you touch down. Off the throttle completely here now once I'm over the uh, the runway. Dip a bit and then nose down, that's fine. Nose feels steering on. I didn't deploy my parachute because I know this is quite a not longest runway in the world, but. Um, I know that I can now uh, break. Break OK. And then just turning off into this little dink. Roger that. Turning back onto the runway because remember you have to taxi on some of it. At this point, I notice that I've just got my landing light on here. So I need to change out of the taxi and light. Yeah, so just say, remember, uh, you have to bleed the speed when you're coming in for landing now. It is um, rather scary coming in to land and you're, uh, and you're hot. There we 
there we go, put the taxi lights on. So uh, just a recap, been a lot of changes, sorry I didn't I didn't print out the uh, change log, but uh, JF-17 has a lot of uh, changes to it. Most of them I haven't discovered, but uh, in this mission uh, I discovered the uh, clicking, the new clicking sounds of the um, cockpit, which I like. I noticed there uh, doesn't seem to be a um, collision light anymore. Um, the radar, which is the most important thing, is working. The air to ground radar that is, is working, it looks absolutely fine. Uh, makes uh, these ground missions the way they should be. Uh, just unworkable prior to the fix. If you had moving targets that is. So just nicely taxi into my taxi bay here. Not as busy as the uh, aircraft carrier at the beginning of this mission when my AWACS took off. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll have immersive um, airfield crew as well. Maybe commercial flights and other shenanigans going on around uh, airports. Who knows? But Eagle Dynamics have done a great job. Very immersive. I can run it on a rubbish PC. Everything's absolutely fine with it. Graphics are great. Just squaring this up to park. Notifications coming through from uh, people on the ground that there were some big explosions in uh, the city tonight over in Iran and uh, confirmation that um, on the news wires that um, that tango has been destroyed, eliminated, took out. Good job. Well done. Auto shut off sequ sequence initiated. Warning. 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 Uh, yeah, just uh, went like clockwork, everything, really. Uh, most important thing is just check the weapons that were released go to weapons and as you can see I did have two hits and one of them was my um, guy in the Land Rover there which we called the Tango dead so thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, like and subscribe would be much appreciated. Uh, have a good day and keep safe. Bye.